All right, welcome back to another touch center tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at how you can make use of the texture instancing technique when you're on a Mac. So basically what texture instancing is that we have, in this case, we have five different instances, so five different geometries or copies of one geometry. And we want to put a different texture on each of these. So uh, instead of making several copies of the geo, we really just want to make a little like instancing setup so we can put a different texture on each of these instances. So the problem is that the normal or usual way of doing instancing, right? When you when we look in our geo here and then go to the instance two page, this normal approach where we use these three parameters doesn't actually work on a Mac. So there is a little workaround, which I'm going to show you in this video, which require requires a bit of a, like a bit more of a setup. But um, it works basically just as well. The only problem about it is that you cannot use videos. You can only use static images. All right, so let's just dive into it. All right, so today I'm not actually going to delete everything because I think we've uh, done, we've created enough render setups in the, in the past months or years. So I'm just going to get rid of a part of this and I'm just going to re-add my geo here. And also, I'm just going to go over what I've got in my network. So, of course, we've got a render to, uh, yeah, for this render setup. Then we've got a little rectangle or grid, which we're going to put the, uh, where we're going to put the textures on. We've got a camera that's uh, looking at a null, and that's also constrained by a, another null. And we also got an environment light and an environment map, which is just a movie file in. I'm using the cloudy ocean. And we got two lights. Uh, one of them is producing shadows and both of them are positioned at different spots. So uh, yeah, apart from that, we also got a floor. So this is really just a rectangle that's uh, lying flat on the ground. And one thing about the two things about the camera is that we got a background color here. So like a light gray. And we also got some fog with the fog set to linear and uh, just changed a few things here. Alrighty, so let's get going. I want to start by making a few copies of this that, that so we can like put textures on it. So I'm going to start with a ramp top. And I'm going to change the resolution here to four by one. And I'm going to change the pixel format to 32 bit float. And I'm also going to change the viewer smoothness to nearest pixel. Yeah, then I'm going to just add a math to this. And again, go to common page and change this to nearest pixel. And I want to change this to a range of um, minus one and one actually. So if we hadn't changed the pixel format to 32 bit float, well, then you, if I press D now, uh, then you can like, let's just ch change this back to the original. Then you can see that th this doesn't go below minus and we actually have to go below minus and above one. So we want to be able to do that. So we have to change it to 32 bit float. All right, let me change. Uh, let me add a null and call it pause. And let me go to my geo turn instancing on use this pause on here. And let's just use R for translate X. And there we go. We got four copies of our grid or rectangle. Perfect. I'm actually going to change the resolution to something lower so it doesn't complain here. There we go. All right. So I think we can uh, leave it that way. And I'm just going to go ahead and create uh, the textures now. I'm just going to turn that display off for now and add a noise top, as I so often do. And I'm going to change the resolution to, uh, tr yeah, let's actually just use 1024 by 1024. I'm going to change the period to 6, go down with my harmonics, and also go down the exponent to 0.3 and I'm going to turn monochrome off so we have some color going on here. Then I'm going to add an edge, change the strength to 10 and the sample step to 3 and 3. And now I don't want to have a transparency in the background so I could add this to just one but if you do want to add some kind of color later on it might make more sense to just add a transform turn alpha to one comp over background color on and then you could technically change the color. I'm just going to leave it black. I'm going to add a null. And I'm going to call this null map zero. And this is actually going to become quite important later on that we have this null. All right, now I want to make several copies of this. 
And uh, every time I copy this no noise, I actually want to have a different noise. So I can just do that by making use of this digit, right? If I copy this, I've got a different digit there. I can just use this little expression called me.digits. I also can't write me.digits. And now um, if I copy all of this, just like four times, like three times, so it's four, um, you can see the noise is different every time. And I want to increase uh, like the, the difference by just changing the period here to four, maybe here to like three and this to like one. All right. Cool. So I'm just going to quickly show you how you usually do this now just so you have a recap. So um, for both techniques, we have to actually create an, an index channel. So I'm going to add a math here. I'm going to change the range to zero and three and also change the viewer smoothness here. So why are we changing it to zero and three? Well, we got four maps. We got a map that's zero, one, two, and one with a three uh, as an index, you know, like zero, one, two, three. So that's what we're basically doing here. Four values between zero and three. And the thing is right now is if we um, make this active and press D, we can see it's like 0 0.3, 1 1.1, 1 1.8, and 2.6. We actually want to have clean integers. So I'm going to change integer to round. And now we can see if I make this active again, zero, one, two, three. Perfect. That works very well. I'm just going to add a null and I'm just going to call this index. So again, the usual approach would now be to go to the instance two page and actually uh, can't see that now. That's perfect. Just going to make this bigger. Um, I'm going to use this index on the texture index OP. I'm going to use R for a channel and I'm going to use map asterisk for the maps. So if I turn on the viewer again, so now we can see we get these four different textures spread over the four different instances. So I'm just going to get rid of this because we're not actually uh, using that now, but I want to do something very similar. The thing is we want to use the texture coord OP and this W here. So I'm just going to drag my index in here and select R again. Uh, it doesn't matter. You could also use G or B, but I'm just going to go with the first one. And uh, you can see nothing happens. And we don't have a field where we can define these maps because it's actually a bit of a different workflow. What we got to do, we've got to fill a texture 3D uh, operator. And to do that, we got to use a switch. And inside the switch, I want to have all of my inputs. Right, so all four inputs right now. And then I'm gonna use a little expression in here. But first I'm gonna add a well, what happened there. I'm gonna use a texture for D. And I'm gonna change the type to 2D texture array and the cache size to four because we got four textures, right? And I'm gonna turn prefill on. Now if I pulse this, nothing is happening. Well, we're really only like giving it one input. And um, this is actually based on time. So we can use like a expression here called me.time.frame minus one. And that's the expression uh, for this to work. Me.time.frame minus one. And now if I press polls, you can see we get all four different textures in there. To be able to nicely reset this every time I do a change, I'm going to add a keyboard in and just use that on the polls. So if I were to change something here, you can now see that change. It's kind of hard. That was it. kind of hard to see, but yeah. All right. So we uh, basically, it looks like rows and columns, but actually the, f the way I understand that what's actually going on here is that technically these textures are behind each other. They're not next to each other like here, but actually one is in the front and then they're all like one after the other. So, if I now add a null and call this color maps, we can use the root over root route uh, via a material. And in this case, I'm going to use a PBR to um, make use of the index that we have already set up here. So I'm going to use this here as a base color map. And then I want to use my PBR as the material. And then we can see this is working nicely. We're we're uh, using the four different textures on the four different instances. I'm going to go down from my roughness to 0.3. Then you can see uh, the light is sort of being reflected there a bit more. So if you don't have this 
uh, our channel here selected, you're going to see that's uh, the first image only, first texture only. Uh, so we have to define that channel basically to tell it, look for like texture zero, look for texture one, two, three, and so, so on and so forth. All right, so let's have a look at making this a bit more dynamic. So because the thing is, if I want to add another texture now and put that in here, it's going to be really annoying to set up everything. So first off, I'd have to change the resolution here. Then I'd have to change the range here to one more. Then I'd have to change the cache size to one more and then press one. And uh, yeah, you don't want to do that every time. So now if I delete this, um, I'd have to change everything again. So to um, make things a bit easier, I'm going to add an op find that, and I'm going to change the filters to name map asterisk. So now you can see it only selects all of these maps. If it's just an asterisk, you're going to see all the available operators in this level. Right, so I'm going to change this back to map. We don't really need to output uh, the type. We can just use a select here because we also have this name thing. We don't want to have the name. So I'm going to change this to index and just add a one here. So now you can see we have z map zero, one, two, three, which is a total of four rows, right? If you middle mouse click rows four, and we can use that value to, um, to drive all of these parameters that we just manually changed. So I'm going to change this name here to amount. Then I'm going to go to my ramp and I'm going to type in a little expression here, op amount dot num rows. That's really all I've got to do. It's automatically updated. Um, I'm going to change the, I'm going to use the same expression here and also on my math. But here in the math, I have to subtract one because we're starting at zero. Okay, so the cool thing now, if I again show this, if I copy and paste this, maybe even go further down of the period, you can see it automatically created a new texture. But I also, of course, have to like add it to the switch. And if I press one now, my texture 3D updates and we get the last texture in there. So you, you do have to always manually add it there. You could kind of write a script, but we're not gonna look into that now. But for example, if we delete this, it automatically, like everything updates perfectly. Cool. So one last thing I wanna show you here is uh, that we just want to make this a bit more dynamic. So I'm just going to add a noise here. I'm going to go down with the harmonics, change the period to two, and I'm going to um, animate this. So abs time dot seconds times point one. And I'm going to change the output RGB to just noise and my viewer smoothness to nearest pixel. Then I'm going to add a math and a null. I'm going to call this rotation and as we want to use this as a rotation channel we want to change the range to 0 and 360 for a full rotation can change this to nearest pixel maybe and let's just use this on the instance one page rotation rotate y use r and now our um, little rectangles here with the textures on them are rotating around and I think that that's where really the, the PBR material sort of shines, literally, <laughs> because um, you can see the reflection a bit better. So we can also use this as a specular um, level map or as a roughness map. So the way it reflects is a bit different. So you can just play around with that. But of course, the main focus in this uh, tutorial here is the, the texture instancing. So just to recap, we're just building a an index here, which has has to be like remapped to the amount of textures that we have and uh, we're building a few different textures and we are using a switch with this me.time.frame minus one expression so we're like basically constantly switching through all of these and then we're using a texture 3d to uh, put all of these together into one texture array so basically like several textures behind each other and then we're using all of these on the PBR. This could also be a Fong. Then we're using that material on the Geo and using our uh, index channel that we made to select all the different textures. Okay, I hope that makes sense and I hope this works well for you. Okay, so thanks a lot for everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. 
And thanks a lot for watching this and I'll see you on the next video.